During the Mesolithic period, also known as the Middle Stone Age, a new race of hunter-gatherers took over Western Europe. Arriving in Europe around 20,000 years ago, Western hunter-gatherers gradually spread out across all of the Western continent. When they came into Northern Europe, the last Ice Age was coming to an end, and the climate was significantly warmer than before, allowing wild animals and people alike to thrive. Western hunter-gatherers were medium height but robustly built, with strong teeth and bones, and included Labrana Man, Loshboer Man, and Cheddar Man. Controversially, genetic testing suggests that they had dark skin and blue or green eyes, in great contrast to how these Cro-Magnons are usually portrayed. However, the biggest mystery is where did they come from? The term Western hunter-gatherer refers to a distinct ancestral component of modern Europeans descended from a population of Mesolithic hunter-gatherers who dispersed across Western, Southern and Central Europe from the British Isles in the west to the Carpathians in the east following the retreat of the ice sheet of the last glacial maximum. The western hunter-gatherer, along with the Scandinavian and eastern hunter-gatherer, formed one of the three major genetic groups in early Holocene Europe's post-glacial period. Western hunter-gatherers are recognized as a distinct ancestral component of most modern Europeans' ancestry. According to some anthropologists, Western hunter-gatherer skin color ranged from olive to black, and they may have had some regional variation in eye and hair colors. This is in stark contrast to the distantly related Eastern hunter-gatherers, who have been described as having light skin, brown or blue eyes, and dark or light hair. Labrana Man and Cheddar Man, two Western hunter-gatherer skeletons with incomplete genomes, are predicted to have had dark or dark-to-black skin, whereas Sven and Loshboer Man, two other Western hunter-gatherer skeletons with complete genomes, are predicted to have had dark to intermediate and intermediate skin, respectively. Perhaps the skin color of Western European hunter-gatherers was more similar to that of the pygmy people of today's Central Africa region. Only one thing is certain. They did not carry any known mutation responsible for lighter skin in subsequent populations of Europeans who came from the Middle East. In fact, the ancestors of the Western hunter-gatherers were populations associated with the Epigravetian culture, which largely replaced populations associated with the older Magdalenian culture around 14,000 years ago, as discussed in a genetic study published in Nature in March 2023. Western hunter-gatherer ancestry is referred to as Obercastle ancestry in the study, and was first discovered north of the Alps in two 14,000-year-old individuals at the site at Oberkassel in Germany, who can be modelled as an admixture of Villa Bruna ancestry, which is an ancestry from northeastern Italy related to individuals found in Europe prior to the last glacial maximum. Analysis reveals that all Western hunter-gatherers have 75% to 90% Villa Bruna ancestry, with the remainder descended from a 15,000-year-old Ice Age individual from Goyet Cave in Belgium. According to the study, Western hunter-gatherer ancestry was mostly formed before spreading, possibly around the west side of the Alps, to Western and Central Europe, as well as Britain, where sampled Western hunter-gatherer individuals are genetically homogeneous. The Villa Bruna ancestry of Italy eventually became the most common hunter-gatherer ancestry throughout Europe, Further paleogenomic research on Upper Paleolithic Balkans individuals will be required to determine whether southeastern Europe is the source of Villa Bruna ancestry and a climatic refugium for human populations during the last glacial maximum. Marine isotope stage 2 began around 29,000 years ago, and cooling intensified, most likely causing the mutation for light skin in Eurasian. This cooling peaked around 21,000 years ago during the last glacial maximum when glaciers covered Scandinavia, the Baltic region, the Alps and the British Isles, and winter sea ice reached the French coast. The Alps were also glaciated, and most of Europe was polar desert, with the Mediterranean coast dominated by mammoth steppe and forest steppe. As a result, large swaths of Europe became uninhabitable until after 20,000 years ago. According to one theory, Western hunter-gatherers are thought to have evolved before 14,000 years ago during the bowling allard interstadial during the first major warming period following the Ice Age. 
They represent a significant population shift within Europe at the end of the Ice Age, most likely a population expansion from North Africa or the Middle East into continental Europe. The Bowling Allard Interstadial, also known as the Late Glacial Interstadial, was a brief period of warm and moist interstadial weather that occurred near the end of the last glacial period. This warm period lasted from 14,690 to 12,890 years ago. It began with the end of one cold period and abruptly ended with the onset of the Younger Dryas, a cold period that reduced temperatures to near glacial levels in less than a decade. This abrupt reversal could have been caused by isostatic rebound in response to glacier retreat, as well as an increase in salinity due to increased volcanic activity at the onset of Bolling Allard. Following the Bolling Allard warming interstadial, the pre-Ice Age cluster in Central Europe was replaced by the Villa Bruna cluster, named after its oldest E.P. Gravettian-associated individual from northern Italy, but which also includes the majority of the Epi-Paleolithic and Mesolithic-associated groups from Central and Western Europe, all of which are also known as Western hunter-gatherers. Furthermore, phylogeographic analysis suggests that the Epigravetian-associated gene pool may have entered the Italian peninsula through northeastern Italy. This finding, combined with the genetic affinity of the Villa Bruna population to ancient and modern Near Eastern ancestors, suggests that the incoming Epigravetian-associated culture originated in the Balkans. But according to the phylogenetic reconstruction of Epigravetian-associated genomes, the turnover occurred much earlier than 17,000 years ago. This suggests that the genetic discontinuity could be the result of paleogeographic and paleoecological changes associated with the last glacial maximum rather than the bowling allard warming period. The last glacial maximum may have thus created a corridor south of the Alps for east to west human migrations genetically connecting hunter-gatherer populations from the Balkans to Italy and North Africa, possibly by migrations along existing lower sea-level coasts. The study also found that SLC24A5, a variant of a gene associated with light skin in Europeans and people from the Middle East, evolved relatively recently, only 29,000 years ago. As noted earlier, marine isotope stage 2 began around 29,000 years ago, most likely causing the mutation for light skin in Eurasians. This suggests that Western hunter-gatherers may have arrived in Europe from northern Africa by crossing to Sicily and Italy during extremely low Ice Age sea levels, then mixing with a population related to earlier Ice Age Europeans from whom they inherited their distinctive blue eyes. In fact, in late Epigravetian Sicily, a Western hunter-gatherer population supports a corridor between Africa and Italy. Grotta d'Oriente is a small coastal cave on the island of Favignana, the largest of the Egardi archipelago, five kilometers off the coast of Sicily. A funeral pit on the island has radiocarbon dates on charcoal that are consistent with the associated late E.P. Gravettian lithic assemblages, referring to the burial between 14,200 and 13,800 B.P., when Favignana was connected to Sicily and Sicily was connected to the Italian peninsula. The reliable record of radiocarbon dates shows that this population arrived in Sicily between 15,000 and 14,000 years ago, several millennia after the last glacial maximum. These analyses, in the opinion of some researchers, have implications for understanding the origins and spread of Western hunter-gatherers. This burial has a strong genetic relationship with Western hunter-gatherers, implying that the Western hunter-gatherers were a homogeneous population widely distributed in the central Mediterranean, presumably as a result of continuous gene flow among different groups or range expansion after the last glacial maximum 20,000 years ago. Meanwhile, the DNA of 11 Western hunter-gatherers from the upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods in Western Europe, Central Europe and the Balkans was studied in order to determine their male Y-DNA and female mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. For more than 6,000 years, Western hunter-gatherers were widely distributed from the Atlantic coast in the west to Sicily in the south and the Balkans in the southeast. As discussed, 
Western hunter-gatherers had dark skin, dark hair and blue eyes, according to DNA analysis. The dark skin could be attributed to their recent out-of-Africa origin, while the blue eyes were caused by a mutation in their OCA2 gene, which caused iris depigmentation. In fact, this mutation for light-coloured eyes may have originated in the Caucasus region as long ago as 42,000 years ago. Nevertheless, a widely reported study that attributed blue eyes to a single ancestor who lived between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago has been debunked due to the study's small sample size. In fact, the oldest direct evidence of blue eyes comes from a hunter-gatherer who lived in northeastern Italy 17,000 years ago, but the mutation may have occurred around 42,000 years ago. Indeed, western hunter-gatherer groups have high frequencies of the gene responsible for green or blue eyes, which is associated with light eye color. At the time, this gene was common in the Caucasus region and had spread west into Europe. Furthermore, SLC24A5 and SLC45A2, two genes associated with light skin color, were almost completely absent in western hunter-gatherers. However, only if they migrated directly from Africa to Europe, without stopping in the Middle East, could this be explained. Human skin tone has varied greatly over the last 900,000 years. A long-held belief about the evolution of skin color was that Homo sapiens began in Africa with darkly pigmented skin, full of melanin to protect against the sun's intense ultraviolet radiation. It was thought that as humans migrated out of Africa, mutations resulted in lighter skin, which can supposedly regulate vitamin D production in lower sunlight levels. However, a new study published in the journal Science reveals that the evolution of skin color is far more complicated. A variant for light skin, found in both Europeans and Botswana and San hunter-gatherers, arose around 900,000 years ago, for example. Even before Homo sapiens existed, our ancestors had a mix of genes for light and dark skin. Additional skin color associations were discovered in the OCA2 and HERC2 genes, which have previously been linked to skin, eye and hair color variation in Europeans, though the mutations identified are novel. The researchers discovered genetic variations in HERC2, a neighboring gene that regulates OCA2 expression. It's worth noting that early humans' coastal dispersal into Europe may have allowed them to keep their ancestral pigmentation alleles because reduced vitamin D photosynthesis in the skin, due to a high melanin content, was mitigated by marine and plant-based sources of the vitamin, such as fungi and lichens. These genes also influence eye color, in particular OCA2 and HERC2 has been linked to sexual selection and is strongly associated with blue iris color in Europeans. This may also be a direct response to a short winter photo period at high latitudes. Blue eyes increase intraocular light scattering and thus suppress pineal gland melatonin release. This could be an adaptive trait to help reduce and or prevent depression, which has been linked to short day length. They discovered a variant in OCA2 that is common in Europeans and is associated with a shorter version of the protein with an altered function. The study also discovered a signal of balancing selection of OCA2, which means that two different versions of the gene have been kept alive for more than 600,000 years. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning.